I'm highly qualified. I know where I'm supposed to go, and then I can't go just because different skin color is preferred. That's where I just told myself, okay, that's it. I'm just going to make a move, and I don't want to be in Malaysia anymore. I find it more <laughs> difficult to climb the career ladder in the UK than I it was in Asia. To be honest, I never had an idea, you know, to be. What to say to how to you know to work in overseas? That was not my my what do you call that? My dream or I wouldn't say that. Migration was a high-profile topic during the referendum debates, mainly stressing on the EU. But what happens to the relationship between Malaysia and the UK? We can't really know at this stage. I mean, if there are positive opportunities, if it creates opportunities for the UK to grow, then obviously that may create more labour market opportunities. It may mean that more Malaysians can come and work here. But because of the fact that there is still this policy of reducing net migration to the tens of thousands, there are still going to be limitations on that. So skilled migration to the UK at the moment is limited to 21,700 per year, I believe. For some, discrimination by Malaysia's Muslim Malay majority has led them to seek a better life in the UK. Has migration made the migrant better off? It is amazing. I feel like I completely belong here. See, back in Malaysia, uh, even though I'm a Malaysian, I always felt like uh, I'm a second-class citizen because that's how you're treated over there. You know how things are very different in Malaysia, but over here, even though I'm a foreigner, I still feel very British because you're treated equally and very fairly and people are very nice here. You have people from all around the world. This is what you call multicultural all about. Britain, described as the melting pot, became an attraction for many migrants. For some, it's for career development, for others, higher studies, and for some, better life. But for how far short do they ever think their expectations may fall? I had to make a decision, you know, so it was not like me that, it's not, not like my head that I want to always want to be in overseas, I always want to be in Mal uh, in London. I never thought of that, you know, that was never my idea. I could already see the big challenges that I'm facing, purely because the culture, which is English culture or British culture, is very, very different than an Asian culture. Adaptability was getting very, very difficult, more than what I thought it would be. Discrimination still exists. Uh, uh, skin colour is still being looked at as well from a professional perspective. A sense of openness in a, in a country does make it more attractive to people. Having said that, I mean the UK's uh, the UK's attractiveness to migrants has often been as much about the economic opportunities that are available here as about the cultural melting pots. In our A report by the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development shows the proportion of immigrants with degrees has doubled in just six years to nearly a half. In terms of uh, economic progress, in terms of uh, political maturity, in terms of social progress, uh, we are catching up fast, uh, if not we are equal. Yeah? So for that reason, I think it's very important that uh, the, um, the relations between Malaysia, uh, in terms of education, between Malaysia and UK is intensified because at the end of the day, is the investment of this human resource that will help to equalise the relation, which has been quite asymmetrical for, for the past 10-15 years.
a mass influx of migrants has given the UK the fastest rising percentage of ethnic minority and foreign-born populations. I've been in the UK now for 12 years now. I've already switched two jobs from there, from the, my stepping stone job, which is the off-license thingy. And then after that, I jumped into a fashion studio, which is completely different from an IT field, which is part of my passion too, and I kind of always like to be in fashion, so it's quite good. And then from there, I branched out on my own. I became, uh, I opened up my own freelance photography, and I'm also doing a few business here and there home decor and all that. So in terms of job satisfaction, I'm very happy because I end up doing what I like. And then from there, I grew up to be on my independent on my own and started doing further things that I like, like home decor and all that. So my job satisfaction is above 100%. When we, when we moved, it was just the two of us. So we thought, all right, we try. We don't like it, we can go back. Uh, Right now we have a child, she's one year old right now. Uh, the way I look at it, my personal opinion is probably she would have a better life here purely from an education perspective. I had to follow actually. I had to follow her all the way. So she came first and then I came uh, later, a few months later. I mean, I thought the grass was obviously greener here. And to be fair, the grass is greener from gaining the wealth of experience. I was also looking for a <laughs> Probably a better uh, quality of life purely because oh, we are just newly wed, we got married or it's an opportunity for us to travel Europe for example. To be honest it's not easy you know, to because um, it's like all of a sudden you are here and then um, unless you, you got offered a job uh, from Malaysia you apply, you got a job and then you come in with the proper um, you know uh, uh, job to be, you know, uh, to be here. That that's a different story, you know. But uh, when you come here as a fresh, not not, not a fresh, if you come here all of a sudden and then you're gonna start something, even though you are a um, graduate in Malaysia, but all your qualification is um, it's um, it's all in Malaysia. It's Malaysian background, you know. I think the thing about migration is that it's fundamentally about trade-offs and what trade-offs people are prepared to accept. Now, so I mean, having a large amount of labour migration to the UK brings potentially economic benefits. It means that people, it means that the country has more money potentially. 